Hello and welcome, I'm Davis DeWitt, and in this episode, I had only 36 hours to design, build, paint, and program the safecracker prop for an upcoming kids movie. Now, as you can imagine, this was quite the undertaking for such a short notice project. However, if you're curious to see how it did on screen, I have some clips from the actual movie at the end of this video, so you can see for yourself. Before that happens though, we first need to go back in time to my original conversation with the movie's producer and my close friend, Branscombe Richmond, who, if you play video games, you might recognize his voice since he's also Gibraltar in Apex Legends. Hey Branscombe, how are you? Very good, very good. How are you, bro? I'm good. I've, I hear you got a kids movie that you're working on. I you need some help. I got a kids movie coming out, uh, you know, that I want to make. Yeah, yeah. And it's called Kangaroo Kids, and I need a prop made. Uh, and that's why I'm calling you. Yeah, what, what kind of what kind of prop are you looking for? What's the scene? We Our, our two bad guys are going to uh, safe crack uh, a safe. And I need this gadget that I can put on the outside of the safe that looks uh, – consumer friendly from a child's point of view okay so we need something that's you know small portable would look kind of you know kid friendly and and is cracking the safe essentially so the bad guys can get in copy copy yeah perfect uh, and make it look fun too okay yeah. okay and uh it sounds like you need this pretty quick really quick turn around on this yesterday <laughs> all right well sounds like a good challenge for me i'll uh, get to work on it you got it. Welcome to show business, buddy. It's yesterday. <laughs> we did it yesterday. Exactly. Perfect. All right, Branska. Well, I'll get on to it, and I'll have that sent off to you guys super quick. Thanks, bro. Talk to you then. All right. Bye. Bye. Well, in typical Hollywood fashion, I have a lot of work to do and not a lot of time to do it. So let's get this project rolling and jump over to the whiteboard. To get started with this build, I first need to pick what design I want to go with. And given this is a kid's movie, I have some very strict requirements. The first of which being we need some lights that blink for no reason. Also, a big red button, that is crucial, and some uh, programming gibberish to come up on the screen so that during the movie, the audience knows our safecracker is doing something. So, with all that in mind, I think I'm going to design my safecracker after the detonators demolitions expert used. They look something like this. Of course, once we simplify that design down, we're left with something that looks kind of like that. And I really want this to look almost like a handheld game device, because after all, this is for kids. So it should be fun and approachable, even if the villain is using it. After all, we are in a time crunch, and I don't want a design that's too overly complicated. So let's take this and jump over into my CAD program so we can start designing it. For this stage, the main thing I tried to design for was oversized proportions that would read well on camera, especially considering this is going to be a pretty short scene. Now, in addition to the two main buttons, I'm also adding a power switch and rotary encoder to help give this build a few more tactile functions. With the housing design done, I can now start printing out all the components on my 3D printer. However, if I had more time, I'd just send everything over to today's sponsor, PCBWay, and have them do all the work. With dozens of options for 3D printing, CNC machining, PCB prototyping, and more, PCBWay makes it incredibly easy to bring whatever it is you're working on to life. To learn more and to support the people that support me, check out the link in the description. Anyways, back to the build. While my 3D printer is working on all the external parts, that means it's time for me to work on all the internals. And first up is figuring out what exactly we want our display to do. What I ended up settling on was three discrete pages, a scanning page, a hacking page, and a hacking completed page, just to keep things simple. To actually display that content, I opted for a two inch OLED display since they provide excellent contrast and a wide viewing angle. With that sorted, I could finally start writing all the code that would turn my hand-drawn sketches into the actual outputs on the screen. Once all the bugs were ironed out, I could upload the code to my microcontroller and assemble the breadboard prototype to ensure everything worked as intended. At this point, I could finally run my first full test with all the components working together. And as you can see, it looks like the correct pages are cycling through for each button press. Plus, we now have our ever so crucial blinking lights. By now, the enclosure had finished printing, so I got to start on my favorite portion of any build, which is hours of sanding and priming. As the sun started to rise on another beautiful morning, day two had officially begun. But the clock was ticking, and simply put, I was running out of time. With only 12 hours left, I still have to get this bad boy painted and assembled. Now, fortunately, the primer coat has been drying overnight, so we should be good to start throwing some paint on it. Since I live in the city, I don't have a backyard to leave my paint projects drying in, so instead I've been using my poor laser as a vented drying rack. This fortunately helped speed up the drying process, which was crucial since I didn't have the full 24 hours to let the paint dry before starting assembly.
Well, assembly is all finished, and I'd love to give you a closer look to this bad boy. However, I literally have to go. Production is about to leave for Kentucky, so I need to go drop this off, which is a shame because I wanted to do some weathering and decal work, but a deadline is a deadline, so I'll have to wait until they're done with filming and I get this back to do all that work. Once filming had wrapped and I got the safe cracker back, I was finally able to make some custom decals for it and do a few passes of artisanal sanding to give it that proper battle-worn look. All that was left now was to sit back and wait for the movie to come out. It's Christmas! And, more importantly, it's also the premiere of our movie, Kangaroo Kids, so we get to finally see how our safe cracker did on the big screen. All right, all right, all right, come on. Come on, get that thing working. You know how to work that thing, right? Can you just focus? Come on! Open sesame. Well, even without all the weathering and decal work, it still looks pretty good on screen. Though I probably would have gone with a different color had I known it would be a night scene, but oh well. Either way, seeing your work on screen never gets old, and I'm always so happy to see filmmakers who want to use practical effects as opposed to just doing everything in CGI. Because for me at least, there's nothing more real than movie magic. And on that note, thank you so much for watching, and be sure to stay tuned for future builds.